and welcome back to our top 100 and I'm actually doing from number 10 to number one so we're in the really good stuff now um, so my number 10 game is um, the a deck builder that I have probably played the most I just really like this one and that is Star Realms so played Star Realms a lot it's one that goes over very well um, I've introduced it to my boys they didn't really want to play a game at the time and I said please come let's play and then we played it real quick and then I said okay you guys are free to go I gotta make supper and they ended up staying at the table playing three more rounds um, and it's a fairly small card game so they also have taken it to school to play with their friends um, which is a big hit in my mind you know so this one is just it's very simple um, deck building game that's just so satisfying to play so you start with the all players start with the same hand a card and then you have scouts that'll give you the ability to purchase card and then you'll have the vipers that will uh, attack and it's a one versus one last man standing is the winner type of card game um, so with the cards that you can purchase they'll be different cards so they'll have attack they'll have the ability to purchase they'll have combination of both and there's even some that can heal you um, and then you'll be purchasing these cards um, some of them will be you know ship cards that will go into your hand um, well first they go into the discard pile so when you have to shuffle because you've used up all of your cards you shuffle the discard pile that becomes your new draw pile so once it's in the draw pile these ships will just be part of your hand as regular some of them will have different faction um, which will possibly allow you to unlock extra abilities so if it's a yellow card and you have another yellow card it's like okay well this one gives you a purchase of three but if there's another yellow card in your hand then it also attacks by two uh, for example so you can kind of unlock extra abilities if you have a lot of the similar cards um, some cards are space station and these are going to be very interesting because they stay into play um, and depending on the type of shield they have if it's a black shield it protects you and anybody who attacks has to destroy that space station before they can hit you so it's it's convenient uh, and then you have the gray shield ones where they don't have to attack it they can still attack you and kind of get around it um, but depending on what they do they may want to attack that space station anyways um, so you'll have these cards and then the space station actually don't get discarded they stay into play um, so they'll just stay on the table if they ever get destroyed they're trashed they're gone they don't go into your discard pile um, this is a, a such a neat game I really enjoy this one there's also hero realms which is the fantasy theme version of this game for some reason even though they play almost identical I prefer star realms I don't know why it's not like the space theme appeal to me more but it's just one that I gravitate to in my number nine position I have Lord of Waterdeep uh, Lords of Waterdeep was my gateway game. My brother had purchased um, a board game for me for my birthday, but when he came to give it to me, he also brought this one for us to play. And if you notice, it's just up here on my shelf. Um, and we played it, and it was so good. This one is so satisfying to play. So it's a worker placement game. You have so many workers, you'll go from one location to location. If you're there, you're blocking it from the other players. Um, some of the things you'll be doing is collecting resources, which are different cubes. You'll have the white cube, the orange cube, the purple cube, the black cube. And then at the top of the board, there's different missions that you're trying to accomplish. And these missions will require for you to spend so many resources. So it could be that this one will give you 10 victory points, but you need to have two purple and three black cubes uh, in order to complete it. And then it'll give you the victory points and gold or other things. Um, so it's so satisfying to collect those, trying to collect the resources so that you can fulfill those quests and uh, complete them. And then once they're completed, they go face down unless there's a special ability that they do as well where you'll kind of keep track of it. But you also have a special goal that could be you're trying to get the most type of some sort of quest and you're trying to accumulate the most of those or you're trying to have the most building because one of the things that you can do is you can purchase buildings that gives a new location that you can go to as a for for everybody on the board but if you own the building you anybody who visits your location you get an extra um, resource or an extra perk for it so neat 
love this game. I pulled it out just a couple weeks ago with gamers that hadn't yet had the chance to play this one, and it went over really well. So that's my number nine, Lords of Waterdeep. In my number eight position, I have Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. So, to be honest, I actually purchased the insert, uh, like the, um, yeah, like, not the the insert? Yeah, the insert for the box to organize everything, thinking it was another game that I owned. So I purchased the insert before I owned the game, so I was like, well, I might as well own the game then, and I purchased the game. Um, but, you know, I regret nothing. This game is so good. It's app-driven, so um, as you play, you start with the one one tile. It's kind of a dungeon crawl, right? So you start with the one tile and you kind of go into the different room and on the app you'll be like, okay, well I'm going to go into this door and then the app tells you which tile to bring out. So it's not random. The scenario is created for you and then it's like, okay, this cut tile comes out and you'll notice that there's items over there. There's paper over here and there's a weapon on the table so you can go pick that up and there's, oh, there's a monster in there that you would need to kind of deal with and as you explore uh, the mansion more and more comes into play um, and then the app just kind of makes the whole thing so thematic because uh, you have the music you have the story um, it is just so very satisfying each tiles are so amazing like the artwork is just gorgeous um, and just so satisfying to play it's it's a great one I'm glad I own this game that's my number eight and then number seven I bought this game on Look Alone. I walked by, I stopped, I looked at it, and I was like, wow, I'm taking this game with me. And it's also a great game, and that is Ash's Rise of the Phoenix Born. Um, it's actually been reproduced as Ash's Reborn, um, and it's just kind of tweaked a little bit. So there was an expansion pack that took the Ashes. Rise of the Phoenix Born and kind of traded in a few cards to bring it up to be the Ashes Reborn. The artwork in this game is unreal. It is beautiful and so is the card and you play as one of the Phoenix Born. Each Phoenix Born has their own set of cards and then each uh, Phoenix Born with their own set of cards will have different dice they need to utilize so you'll kind of be grabbing those dice to be able to play. What's really neat is you'll have these cards the cards will have spells that you can put into your spell book. They'll have allies that you can bring into your battlefield. Um, some of the spells that you have will conjure creatures that you can also bring into your battlefield and you're battling the other phoenix born so it is another one versus one battle uh, battle card game um, but with this one is you start by rolling all the dice and what you roll is the dice that you'll be able to use to activate your cards and your abilities and your spell and depending on what you've rolled how much you can do with you know so every dice has the bottom symbol um, and you know some of the actions require some of those but it's it's kind of a weaker dice roll um, and then the second level that you can roll um, could be used as a bottom symbol or could be used as a middle symbol and that would activate different abilities as well and then if you roll the top symbol because um, there's three different symbols on the on the dice and if you roll the top symbol then that's going to be the most powerful it could be used as anything it also has its own ability that you could activate the dice itself to create different things um, but you utilize these dice and you'll be like okay well I'm spending these two dice to um, conjure this creature with my spell so that goes into your spent pile and then you have the creature that you brought out and then it's like hey now that I have my creature there I'm going to attack your phoenix born oh and you're blocking with this creature and it's just so neat it is so satisfying as I said like it is such a beautiful game I really enjoy this one then in my number six position I have Dice Throne and I'm including all the Dice Throne season one, season two and the Marvel. They all play very similar and in fact you can mix and match. Each battle chest comes with eight different characters um, and I've acquired all of battle chests but you can buy them uh, in two character packs or in four character packs. There's different options available out there. Um, this is another one that is stunning. The artwork is unreal done by Manny Tremblay and he did an amazing job. Um, and you'll have 
your board for each character and each character have their own set of cards and this is a Yahtzee dice battle game so it's another kind of ideally one versus one battle game I have a thing for battle game I've got a lot of my top 10 here um, but you roll the dice and the dice will have a number or a symbol and you're trying to create a combination that will activate one of the attack that you have on your board so let's say you roll three of that symbol and two of those that activates this one, and then you can do that attack and attack the other character um, or if you have a small straight or a large straight the ideal what you're trying to do is get an ultimate attack when you get all of the biggest symbol which is uh, the number six die and if you get all five ultimate then you can do or f um, symbol, the biggest symbol you get to activate your ultimate which is your ultimate attack it is so neat and you keep in track you have the cards you're keeping track of your combat points which is um, the the currency in this game to activate some of your cards this is an amazing amazing game each character is different from each other they all have their own abilities their own set of cards they all play a little bit differently so having all three battle chests so eight characters in each one there's tons of versatility in this game it's amazing in my number five position I have champions of Midgard I really like this one this is another dice game worker placement so what's neat with this one is the dice that you collect are your warriors um, and you're gonna be rolling them to see what you've done well first what's gonna happen is you're gonna acquire them utilizing the worker placement say okay well I'm gonna take a, a red dice warrior and I'm gonna take a black die one here and then you kinda activate all that now you have your warriors on your player board and then you're going to allocate where you want them to go say well I'm sending this one to go hunting so I can get food or I'm gonna send this one to attack the troll or I'm gonna send this one to attack these monsters or I'm sending these ones across the ocean to go attack the bigger monsters it's more risk but it's higher reward you get more victory points for that because there's more honor in that big battle um, and you're doing all of this and you're trying to acquire as much victory points as you can to become the new leader of your Viking village it is neat now when you're traveling across the sea you gotta bring in your dice your warriors but you also gotta make sure that you have food for them to last uh, the trip across the ocean um, this is a neat neat game there's a lot well it's not like there's tons going on with it but there's a lot to consider there's a lot of different actions that you can do it's a very satisfying game to play and then in my number four position I have Memoir 44 Memoir 44 is another one versus one battle game so there's definitely a theme in this top 10 um, I've played this one for the first time with my brother and then after we played I was like okay I need to hunt this game down and get my own copy I was that impressed with it so everything is controlled by the cards and you can control whether you're gonna move the the people on your the right side of the board in the middle or on the left side and then what troops you're gonna move and what's really cool with it is very historically accurate you're replaying the battles of Normandy so there's a bunch of different scenarios that tells you where you put your troops how you do the attack, what was happening, and you kind of go ahead and replay the Battle of Normandy. Um, have you noticed in this picture, I have some 3D components on my board. This is a friend, of, well, a friend of mine. Um, I had joined the Memoir 44 group and had shown that I was playing with my son. And he offered to send me these 3D components for my game. So I had never met him. He just uh, shipped them over to me and it just brings up the experience like it makes the game board look so amazing this is such a neat neat game really love this one and that was my number four memoir 44 and then in number three position I have blood rage um this is one that actually I purchased this game for the first time in 2017 as a gift to my brother so it wasn't my game I had never heard of it I knew he was interested into it I had never played it so I bought the game gifted to him for his birthday he was thrilled years later I ended up playing his copy and it was so good this is another Viking 
area control battle game. Um, so you have Fahala's upon you. Uh, the end of the world is coming, so you're going down trying to accumulate as much honor through uh, battle as you can. And then you're accumulating your rage because the more rage you have, the more you can accomplish. Um, and you have your clan, um, and you can send them out into um, the different provinces to try to have the most influence there. Then you can raid the villages to acquire some more things that you can kind of add to your board so you have more abilities that you can do. Um, you can recruit monsters to join your clan as well. And But it's really interesting because it's card drafting at first, so depending on the cards that you have, you'll have different goals you're trying to accomplish. You'll have different battle cards that you can kind of add into your battles. There'll be some abilities that gives you different ways to score. There's one that you actually want to lose the battle so that your uh, characters go to Valhalla because you get extra victory points for going to Valhalla and then at the end of the round they come back and they're available to to send off again. This is such a good game and it's funny because I'm not a fan of Risk so I kept convincing myself that I don't like area control game until I play some area control games and I love them so this is definitely an area control game it's amazing great game that's my number three blood rage then in number two position I have chronicles of crime I love whodunits I love whodunits uh, mystery books or movies and I love it in my board games as well and you'll notice they're right over here all my chronicles of crime. Um, so with this one is app driven game as well and you're going through a mystery. There's been a murder so you you get called in and you go to the crime scene and then you use the phone to look around and see what you notice and you'll be like okay well there's paper over there I see blood there's food um, there's like and then as you're going through you go through all these cards and you're pulling them out and each card has a little QR code that you can scan so then you can scan all the things and then it'll tell you that like, okay well that's of interest you kind of discover that and you can put that on the main board and then be like okay well this was the the witness that found the body. So now you can go and scan the ca that character and ask him questions. So you go and then he tells you what he kind of came across and then you can be like, okay, well, as you're talking with him, so you scan him, you can start scanning the other thing. Well, what do you know about the food that was on the table? Or what do you know about, and then you have the victim, so you scan the card for the victim and then that character will tell you about the victim. And so, and it's so neat because you're unraveling this story trying to figure out what happened and it's not just who was the murderer you also have to discover what was the murder weapon or who was the accomplice or what was the motive like there's all sorts of aspect of the story you're trying to unravel I just simply adore this game I've got all the expansions I would have extra stories and then I haven't played most of them because I'm like hoarding them I was like well I want to save it for like the best experience so I played it with Lee the first time and I was like oh my god did you not love it and he's like it's okay and I was like okay I'm not wasting this on okay I'm waiting for somebody who will love it as much as I do which I know my sister will which is I'll get to game together as often so um, maybe I'll just try to do them solo myself but it's just I love the whole aspect of it so much that I don't want to waste them if that makes sense but I've got Chronicles of Crime, Chronicle of Crime, is it the Riverview or River Riverview expansion, the Noir expansion, and then I have the 1400, the 1900, and the 2400, so there's a lot of stories that I have access to it, there's no reason for me to hoard them, but I just gotta get them played now. And then in my number one position, I have Legendary Encounters, uh, Alien, the deck building game. Now, uh, a while back, a few years back, me... Lee and my stepson watched all the Alien movies and then we watched all the Predators movies and it was so neat and it reminded me of this game because I had played it once before and I thought it was a good game but then I was like wait a minute this was way more thematic than I thought it was because I was hadn't watched Alien before so I wasn't really familiar with the story and this one is very satisfying so it's a deck it's a cooperative deck building game where you're battling the game and then each round a card goes kind of down into 
the spaceship and as it reaches the main area is going to flip up and if it's not destroyed before it flips up and if it's an alien it's going to start attacking you every round so you're trying to but you don't know what they are because they're face down so you're going to try to scan the room to be able to reveal what it is and then once it's revealed you can try to battle this alien before it makes it into the main area. Now some of these cards are going to be the objective cards of what you're trying to accomplish. And you can set the deck different ways to play the first movie or the second movie or the third movie. Um, what's really neat is as I said it's very thematic. So one time like you might flip a card over and it ends up being a face hugger. And that's where you have in the movie these eggs that has like a bug that attaches itself onto the character's face. But while it's in there it's actually impregnating them with an alien inside their body. So if you get a face hugger, it's attached to your character and you want to try and get it destroyed before it's your turn again. Because if it's your turn again and it's still there, the face hugger goes away. But now you have a chest burster that goes into your discard pile because you've been impregnated with an alien. And eventually it's going to burst out of your ch uh, chest. Now as it's in the discard pile, it's fine. It's over there. It's nothing's going to happen. But you're eventually going to run out of card in your draw pile. Now you're dis uh, shuffling the discard pile. It becomes your draw pile. And there's a chest burster somewhere in there. And if it comes out and gets played, you die. Your character dies. And then it's up to the rest of the team to kind of try to fulfill and, and uh, fulfill the, the mission. It is so neat. It is so satisfying. I adore this game. Um, now, I also have the Predator one. I have the James Bond one. I have Marvel. Um, I just got the X-File ones, and then we actually started watching the X-File series because of that. Um, and then Matrix has just recently been released, so that's another one that I'll have my eyes on now. Um, but yeah, so satisfying. That's my number one legendary encounters and specifically the alien, uh, the alien one. So that was it for my top 100. We have been doing the top 50 on the podcast, starting with episode 50. So if you want to see my list there and then what Carla has on her list, you can view our uh, view. Yeah. Well, you can listen to it there. Um, I also have my Instagram as Mel's underscore board game underscore room. Um, my Facebook page is Mel's board game room. And my YouTube channel is Mel's board game room. Bye, everybody.